I'm Stephanie and welcome to another video of mine. In today's video I'm going to show you the process of this book sculpture. I titled it half full half empty because it's half ripped off and uh, half filled with growth and natural inspired shapes. Here I'm simply ripping the book apart. I've been butchering a lot of books and the first ones were maybe a bit painful but now it's kind of enjoyable. <laughs> um, it's, it's kind of enjoyable to tear off paper. So just for the record these books were all given to me, or well, not all of them, but most of them were given to me by a friend who didn't want them anymore. Um, either because she read them and she didn't really care about them anymore or because she didn't like them all that much. Um, so yeah, so these are books that she didn't want. None of the books are important. <laughs> so it's nothing that is crucial to humanity, if that makes sense. Most of these are fictional books. Now this one I started by painting in mint, that uh, very bright pale aqua mint, and I used acrylic gouache for that, so it has a very matte result. And that being said, I'm going to cover the whole, <laughs> the whole painting, so it doesn't really matter. I could have left it in white, just in the process of which I was working, I made a total of four books to hang on the walls. And so I decided on the colors by simply painting them before actually butchering them or cutting them or sculpting on top of those. And so I had a mint one, a dark blue one, a pink one, bright magenta, and a yellow one, which transformed into something golden. So this is basically my reasoning for those. I tend to start with a color scheme and then go from there. So this is what I did on this specific sculpture as well. I started with the mint green and I really wanted the four books to go well together nicely on the wall. So I wanted colors that I liked together and hence why I picked mint, dark blue, magenta and yellow, which again has transformed into gold. Now I talk a little bit more about the other books and you can see more footage of those in the vlog that I posted last week, vlog number six, I think. Or you can also check my website. I hopefully by now I will have all the pictures of these books on there. If you live in Melbourne, Australia, or not too far from Melbourne, I'm going to have a solo show for these box sculptures. And so you can see them in real life, which I think is always better to see art in real. It's quite different to see it in real than just on pictures or videos. It really, yeah, especially sculptures because there's an amount of detailing and it's 3D. So the more you move around the sculpture, you can see more details and it's hard to show everything just through sculpting. And uh, yeah, in terms of technique, for this book I used a lot of epoxy clay, so I didn't record how I made the small slime mold. So these are the sticking out little things, uh, rounded shapes um, on, on sort of a black stem. So you can see them here quite well. So black stems and those round, sh uh, round shapes. So these are slime molds. And these are simply the stem itself is called porcelain. So it's very flexible around wire. And then the shape itself, I used air dry clay and I'm pretty sure I used La Doll Premiere from Padico, which is a Japanese air dry clay. I really like it. It's quite expensive for me because I live in France, so it's imported, but I haven't really found another air dry clay that I like as much when it comes to very fine details. And for the rest of the book, I use mostly epoxy clay. Now I'm a bit of on the fence on epoxy clay. I, it's a clay that I never um, recommend because it's quite toxic to use. Um, when you use it, it, you have to be in a very well ventilated area or ideally wear a mask, which is extremely annoying and you have to wear gloves. Um, but at the same time, it's kind of practical because it's it doesn't shrink and it glues itself to the book. Now, that being said, 
I am right now trying to just finish the epoxy clay I still have at home and after that I kind of want to switch to only air dry clay and cold porcelain because it's less toxic for myself and for the environment in general so yeah that's kind of the goal I also used paper uh, here these lichens are made with paper and I just glue them on top of the book and the tiny lichen cups are made with cold porcelain so as you can see I use a lot of different material materials and I go over them quite quickly here now if if you're really interested in learning more about these materials I made a longer class on my Skillshare where I really go more in depth because there's a lot of stuff to say on modeling clays there are a lot of modeling clays available and I actually discover new ones all the time so it's never ending I recently got a new clay because I have bought some Japanese sculpting books because I think the Japanese right now are really impressive sculptors and so I kind of wanted to see if they had specific techniques or specific clays and there's one clay that I bought because of that which is called Fando and uh, and it's interesting clay but it's I'm not too used to it right now it's air dry clay so I like that but it's kind of like in between cold parcel and air dry clay in the feeling as it's it's, it's kind of um, more plasticky and more sticky than regular air dry clay but like air dry clay it stays open and this is something that I've been really enjoying to keep an open clay instead of one that dries on you very quickly. Now I still use a lot of cold porcelain because it's just so damn practical. It's very flexible. It's it's just I, I quite like it. Yeah as I said the lichen cups are cold porcelain. I made those tiny bugs. So the tiny bugs I made them I made prototypes month ago maybe last year I don't recall when so I made the prototypes with polymer clay but it could it could be any type of clay I also am trying to get rid of all my polymer clay and so this is why I am using it up uh, whenever I can and so I made the prototype and then I made molds out of them and then I used cold porcelain to mold them out. I added some wire for the tiny legs and uh, and then I painted them and I used some uh, black paints and then some chameleon paints from green stuff which I really like. And that's why they're so shiny. I quite like that. I'm sure there are other types of chameleon paints out there. I just found those from green stuff quite by chance and I asked them which ones were light fast and they told me and uh, yeah and so we already done <laughs> so this is the final sculpt I hope you enjoyed the video and me working on it and yeah learning a little bit more about the technical details and yeah thank you so much for watching I hope you enjoyed it leave a book emoji if you watched until the end and yeah I really hope to see you in my next video bye